My job is uh, trying to keep everybody else straight, I think. Is that hard? It's hard. It's <laughs> damn hard, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Why is that? Because everybody's got an independent streak in them like I have, and they want to do their own thing. They want to be the ones to keep me straight. <laughs> it's fun at times. Sometimes it's lots of hard work, and sometimes it's high stress working with mom and dad and my sons. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about that. What is the high stress? Oh, mom says do this, but dad says do this. <laughs> and what do you do? I do both. <laughs> do what mom says first. <laughs> what I... mom says first, right? <laughs> there you go. That's your boy. I'm the matriarch of the family. You, and you look lovely today, but you're normally in jeans, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> what all do you have to do when you get up? Um, make sure Danny's out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> Can that be trouble? <laughs> make sure he's up and dressed and ready to start the day. Yeah. Job one. So he can call Jordan and say, when are you coming to work? <laughs> There's a whole lot of things that you don't want to talk about here because some of it could have been illegal. Now, I want you to know that my granddaddy, people ask me why I, why I got into the wine business, and it was strictly because I was getting too old to run. What happens at the festivals? Uh, lots of drunk people. <laughs> <laughs> you have to handle the drunks? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. What happens at the festival stays at the festival, your mom said. Yes. Um, <laughs> what happens to the winery used to stay at the winery. I don't know what's going to happen now, though. <laughs> but we have, we have a spicy wine that we serve a squeeze cheese on. So we offer people that said, stick out your finger. So I've been giving the finger more than anybody in the entire world. <laughs> I have to ask you, how often do you go barefoot? Most of the time. And it's, it, when it's snowing, I, I don't go barefoot all the time. And when I go out in public, it, most places don't like you going Isn't that, very quick. So <laughs> isn't I've given that up painful? On to, that's, you get used to it really quick, actually. Yeah. Now, that has to hurt a little bit. No, you, you really get used to it after a while. <laughs> that's just amazing the animals that you have. I can, you don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have unique things. Peacocks? We have very, llamas. we have almost every domesticated farm animal that you can possibly imagine. Why? We don't have any kind of exotic animals. Like, we don't have an elephant, a leopard, or a tiger. <laughs> not, 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 yet. Yet. Not, not yet. Not yet, right? Yet. Um, so, yeah. so you take care of, and how many, is there a number? That about, you have? we have, what, about 250 guys? You think we have about 250? Maybe more. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't counted today. Yeah. And when I take them to the livestock market, they assure me they're going for backyard pets, not for slaughter. Do you believe them? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I don't care if Nancy thinks they go for pets. They really don't. Do we sell them for meat? <laughs> so she's wrong? She's wrong about that. But <laughs> Don't but tell her. I, don't I, do it. She knows that. That's the reason she names them. <laughs> she knows if it's named, it can't go off the farm. I got a doggone 800-pound pig down there, woman, that I can't get rid of because it's named Porky. <laughs> so your wife's smart. Uh, she knows what she's doing. What am I going to do with it? What can you do with an 800 pound pig except people come in and take pictures? You know, I got, and, and I got a goat down there named Calvin. You know why it's named Calvin? Because it's got a C, the white C on its side. And she said, I'm going to call that goat Calvin. <laughs> now, it's a male goat. I've been neutered, but it's a male goat. So it's not worth a darn for nothing. <laughs> but it's on the farm here, and it'll never leave here. <laughs> so, uh, fruit wines are fun. They can see us grinding up peppers, hot peppers, with masks around our face and running outside, heaving, gagging, choking. They can see us squishing grapes uh, with the grapes squirting out everywhere, all over the white sides of these walls. They will be covered in grape. They can see us with our homemade invention with a motor that my dad made with a four-wheeler tire where we dumped the pe peaches in a bucket at the time and flipped the switch on the motor, electric motor. And the four-wheeler tire runs and smashes the peaches. How did you come up with that? He saw me, he saw me running over the uh, plums one year because it was so dry. And I he thought, oh, that works. Well, I wrapped them up in a tarp and ran over them to crush the plums. They were that dry. So. <laughs> I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought that you'd wanted to see that on TV, you know. <laughs> People going out and drinking that plum wine, you know, that would probably wouldn't have been too too appetizing. But, no. we, uh, you know, you <laughs> you know, necessity is the mother invention. When you need something, you got to get it. Yeah. Uh, what is the hardest part about being here? Does anything go wrong? What doesn't go wrong? Like right now, I'm having to fix a hose. Something's always going wrong. Huh? Yes. 
Shannon said it was a lot of stress. This exploded a second ago. The water just. What happened? Oh, is that what's got, all over the floor? Pink the pressure hose. Yeah, uh -oh. pink in the pressure hose and it blew up the side. Yeah. Now. Right. So what? But but anything like that gets named, we we end up with it here right. on the farm, and it 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 gets expensive feeding them things. <laughs> Can you imagine how much feed it takes to feed out a eight hundred pound pig? <laughs> Good day in the morning. When animals die, and invariably in farm life, you rejoice at the birth, but inevitably there are deaths, and that's the heart. Yeah, I guess I never thought of that. Yeah. All the work that goes into it, you really bond with them, I'm sure. Absolutely. Hey, my philosophy has always been, and my granddaddy told me this. He said, son, if you go out and you got work to do, if you make it fun, you got a hobby. If you make it a job, you have to work. And so our idea has always been to make it fun so this would be a hobby. And we didn't have a job. We just, we didn't have to work. Uh. So we don't, if we dig in ditches, we're going to have fun doing it. We're going to be playing tricks or doing something. <laughs> that's what, the, that's, that's the name of the game is having fun. Right. My wife is at the festival. I don't get to go to a festival without my wife. And we have a wine. I can see why. We have a wine called Sweetheart Wine made with pomegranates. Aww. And you're supposed to hug and kiss your sweetheart when you drink that one. Aww. So I always take that to every festival I go to. And every time I pour it, which is sometimes over 100 times a day, I'll run and hug and kiss my wife and then come back and, <laughs> all right, ladies, I'm all <laughs> warmed up. We have good times here. We have wild times here. Um, There's a lot of you. Isn't this a unique situation, uh, all of you? I would love that. Um, my grandfather bought this farm 21 years before my dad was born my grandson is now running around here so this will be his farm one day or his grandson's probably your great grandfather was in with your grandfather when he bought it mm -hmm. they yeah. were together and we together. go back in this county almost 300 years now yeah the johnson farm at the top of the peaks Great. but i want to know about the beale treasure it's somewhere between that mountain over there mm -hmm. And five miles west. So it's somewhere here. Somewhere Tell me about the treasure. How the, much is it? It's probably, at today's gold price is probably around $60 million worth of gold. You need to find it. Well, I, I would like to. You know, did I show you my new tractor? <laughs> <laughs> you may have found it already is what you're saying, huh? I didn't say that. Now, people all over the world have come to have, your farm yeah. to do documentaries on that thing. Yes, they started, Unsolved Mysteries started in uh, 1984. And they spent about five days here doing uh, a 13-minute, I think it was, document documentary on the Bill Treasure. And since then, the BBC travel, uh, BBC has actually been here twice. Uh, I don't remember all of them, but all the major, all the major yeah. networks have been here. Fox it's with somewhere. Billionaire, uh, no, Millionaire Mysteries. Ooh. And uh, but all of the major. And you're networks. kind of right in the middle of what everybody's looking yeah, at. Yeah, we, way, we this are. Way. Uh huh. We really are. And there's so many legends about it. These people have come in and dug with uh, backhoes. They have dug in cemeteries. They have been arrested. <laughs> Actually, one of your, one of your. Uh, neighbors in Pennsylvania. Aren't you from Pennsylvania? Yeah. I think the lady was from Pennsylvania, came down with a back and brought, got, rented a backhoe and went out to the cemetery digging and got locked up. <laughs> and the judge told her, she said, he said, if you'll go home and never set your foot back in Bedford County again, I'm going to release you. If you don't, I'm going to put you in jail. But uh, she went home. <laughs> She went home without the sixty million. That's right. But, but it's somewhere. It's uh, that's what I they hope say. It's here. It's, uh, I hope it's, it's I hope out here don't. on your property. I hope they don't find it. I get more. I get more out of it from not finding it than if they found it. Because <laughs> people <laughs> it, keep coming. Yeah, people keep coming and hunting for it. But <laughs> it's right. it's it's you know it's around here somewhere. I feel certain. Oh, there's yeah. there's theories on it. There's books been written on it and everything. But BillTreasure.net's where the codes are at and. Uh, there may be somebody lucky out there that can find it. All That's right. Fine. And one of the best parts about working here on the farm, I can piss outside any time I want. I love it. Uh, it's 
it's you know it's in my blood it's it's i, I, I love it and uh so alcohol has been in our in my in our family's blood for a long time illegal and legal uh I, probably so, probably so. Tell me about the competition with the wines. How do you feel about other people getting into your line of work? Well, it's it, it, we. I think we've we've uh, we've done real good out there. I think the wineries are coming along in Virginia. I think we've had a lot of promotion. Uh, we're How unique is fruit wine, though? Well, fruit wine. When we started, we were we were the first winery to do fruit in the state of Virginia. And we were Virginia's first all fruit wine. Unique for what most people grow up like? Uh, yeah, definitely. Going to school, I met friends that have never even been out in the country. They've lived their entire lives on sidewalks. So, yeah. Not fun. No. <laughs> all right, so you almost go barefoot. Yeah, when I can get away with it. Most stores don't let you in, so. <laughs> and working here, we have less than 10 employees, so OSHA doesn't have a regulation here for us wearing shoes, which is nice. Hi, this is your... Wine cellar? What is this? This is where people used to come down the steps to get wine. They don't have to get it anymore. <laughs> this it's is still... when it was still illegal. <laughs> no, this is, this is all legal. You want to run? <laughs> this is where we made the wine. Oh, it smells so good. Wow. This, this one room, we used to make all the wine in here. We ran out of room, so we made this half of the basement. Now we make it all in the whole other building, and by the time I get what's in the tanks down there into here, all this will be completely filled up. Wow. I have so like where a, do you do the actual bottling in there, over there? I used to do it over there. This year I started pumping it over here into this one tank here, gravity feeding it into my unit here. We set it up on tables. And I have a real corker. I used to have a hand corker. It did everything by hand. Uh -huh. Now I have a corker. It's not as fast as going by hand, but uh, oh, I would it's love a, to see that. So easier. Wendy, how often do you do this? Uh, we do this about six months out of the year. About Just it, daily? About every other day. Wow. Yeah. And everything's labeled by hand. Look at that. Blueberry muffin. 